Good morning. Morning and welcome to worship this morning. Siblings in Christ, welcome home. Welcome to worship. And I welcome you who are joining us on uh, the Zoom platform from your home worship spaces. We welcome you. We are grateful that you are worshiping with us on this Memorial Day weekend. We also are welcoming you who are uh, joining us for worship later through our YouTube channel. You are also part of our worshiping community and we are grateful for you. Um, I wanna just give you a couple of notes about today's worship service. Ordinarily on Sundays, about halfway through the worship hour, our children and our youth go to classes out of the sanctuary. They go to their own classes and they learn and explore the theme that we're talking about in the sanctuary in age appropriate ways. So sometimes they'll read stories, they'll break into a little discussion after the stories. Sometimes they do arts and crafts, sometimes they do games, but they're really, wherever their age is, they're learning a little bit more about the theme together. Today, we're all gonna stay together. So we're just all gonna be one family today, all of us together, leaning into one another, being grateful for one another. And um, there's another note at the very end of the worship service. We're going to go out. I'm going to go down the center aisle and I'm going to lead us out that front door and we're going to do a memorial garden walk. We have three memorial gardens we're going to visit on that walk. We'll say uh, a brief um, prayer uh, blessing at each garden and then we'll come back for some refreshments. So that's how the end of the service will go. Um, for prayers this morning, that's going to be a little bit different also because we will not be doing our customary joys and concerns, but what we will be doing is doing a community prayer together where I'm going to offer uh, an opportunity for people to give voice to the prayers that you have together as we are in prayer, and you'll just follow my lead on that. But if you want to make sure, I should say, and if you want to make sure that your prayer requests that you brought in on your hearts this morning show up in the uh, weekly newsletter, I, I invite you to write them, write them on a card, uh, write them in a ledger, print them so we can read them and then just pop them in the offering plate later in the service. And then we'll make sure that the community knows what you have on your heart that you'd like prayers for. Um, so just, just keep that in mind and put those in the offering plate when we get to that, to that point. Sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close this up here. If you are worshiping from home and it is uh, your um, desire to join us in the lighting of the Christ candle to begin our worship together, I invite you to find that candle and that lighter. Those of you who are here together in the space, uh, please join your hearts with mine that all of us may take a moment of silent prayer. So whatever it is that's on your heart this morning, as you come into this place of worship, I invite you to pray silently as I light the Christ candle. Let's pray. Amen. I invite you to continue praying to the prelude.
Good morning. Please join me in the worship. Uh, I will read the uh, regular script, and if you would join me in the bold. Gather us in. Let's try that again. Gather us in. Women and men, tall and short, energetic and tired. Gather us in. Children, elders, thinkers and feelers, artists and engineers. Gather us in. Here are your children, uniquely created, spirit connected. Thank you, God, for all of us. So our opening hymn this morning, uh, we have sung, um, well, we, we sang it a, a, a bit ago, and we sang it a few times, so it might be familiar to some. It's 399, it'll be projected here, God Welcomes All. And it is designed to be sung with a diversity of voices. And since we are in this theme right now of God honors, honoring God's diversity, um, we want to, uh, to try singing this in different voices. So I've asked Francisco if he will play the four parts and we'll practice singing each of the four parts. Find one that fits your voice range. And if you are sitting out there thinking, I don't have a range, that's just simply not true. Everyone has a voice. God has given every single one of us a voice to sing. So um, we're gonna start from the lowest and we're gonna go to the highest and he's gonna play it through, we'll sing it through. And then when we've sung all the parts, then we'll start to sing together in that lovely blend that we're going to make together. And after he's played it on the piano a few times, I've asked him to stand up and direct us like he's done before where he directs us to sing it maybe softer, louder, softer, louder. Again, this is designed to be sung several times. And then some of you have maracas. So I'll raise up my maraca when I want us to bring the maracas in. Okay, so the song is called God Welcomes All. Let's start with the lowest part. So let's try singing that one if that's your range. Okay, next lowest part. So that they will continue to roll around in there from this day on okay um, so he's gonna play them all together now we're gonna all sing together and we'll try to get this and again it's just we're flowing over each other so it's okay no one's grading any of us as we sing this we're not bringing the maracas in yet just our voices everybody get the note one more time ready
Ready? Are you ready? Excellent, everybody. The peace of Christ be with you. Please welcome one another with the peace of Christ. Turn down the aisle to each other, across the room to each other. Make a peace sign, blow a kiss, put your hand over your heart. Peace, peace, peace be with you. Not peace be with you. And welcome back. Peace be with you in the Zoom community also. Okay. The first book of the Bible, Genesis, is a book of beginnings. In it, we find lots of stories about the beginnings of people, the beginnings of things, the beginnings of the natural world. These stories, we might imagine, were told for many, many, many years before they were written down. So imagine they were told around a campfire and they answered questions that were raised mostly by their children, I think, I imagine, because children of all generations and all times have asked a lot of questions, right? Where did flowers come from? Why are there so many different kinds of animals? Why do some swim and some fly? Who made the mountains? And so we look to this book of Genesis and we find some of the answers that our ancient Hebrew ancestors gave to answer these questions. We read one last week about creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Might have been an answer to where did all of this come from? Today's story comes on the heels of the great flood. It is a story of re-creation. The world is beginning anew with two of every kind of species and one human family. This is Noah's family. So how are there people all over the earth when it started with one family might be a question a child would ask. If everybody was from the same family, how did everybody get to be so different? So the storyteller begins from Genesis chapter 11. From Genesis chapter 11, verses one through nine, this is the translation from Robert Alter. And all the earth was one language, one set of words. And it happened as they journeyed from the east, that they found a valley in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them hard. And the brick served them as stone. And bitumen served them as mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, that we may make us a name, lest we be scattered over all the earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the human creatures had built. And the Lord said, as one people with one language for all, if this is what they have begun to do, 
Nothing they plot will elude them. Come, let us go down and baffle their language there so that they will not understand each other's language. And the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth. And they left off building the city. Therefore, it is called Babel. For there, the Lord made the language of all the earth Babel. And from there, the Lord scattered them over all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. If you can't see me, and I realize that those of you in the very front, this is an obstructed view. Uh, I'm going to read a story. It's called God's Big Plan, and it was written as a collaborative project between two professors of McCormick Theological Seminary. That's where I went to seminary, and I had one of these professors for a, a Christian education class I took there because Elizabeth Caldwell, we called her Professor Lib Caldwell. She asked us to call her Lib. Uh, she um, was her area of specialty was pastoral ministry and particularly children's education. She partnered with Ted Hebert, who was an Old Testament professor. And I, I did not take a class from him. And I'm sad about that because some of my colleagues said he was fantastic. His area of specialty was Old Testament and in particular Genesis. And he's done so much work on this story we just heard that he wrote a book about it. And it's about the origins of difference. And it's a wonderful, wonderful book. And so um, these two friends, colleagues came together and wrote a children's book called God's Big Plan. Now you just heard it read out of the Bible, Genesis chapter 11. And I invite you to listen with me now as I read it. And I'm gonna show the pictures and I've asked George to zoom in on them, to try to zoom in on them and then put them on the screen so that you can see the pictures that I'm holding up. So this is God's Big Plan written by Elizabeth F. Caldwell, Theodore Hebert, and illustrated by Katie Vamasaki, God's Big Plan. What is God's Big Plan? We might ask ourselves, right? How did we get to be so different? Why do people speak so many different languages? Wouldn't it be easier if we were all alike? This is the story of the people of God, found in the book of Genesis, people who were all alike and liked it that way. And then God surprised all of them. When the world started again after the flood, the children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren of Noah and Nema and all their descendants moved to a place called Shinar. Everyone in this very large family spoke the same language. Well, you'd expect that, right? And they lived together in the same place. Because they wanted this to be their home for a long time, they began to build a city. They made bricks out of mud and straw and baked them in furnaces until they were hard. They used hot tar for cement to hold the bricks together. They said to each other, let's build a very big city with very tall buildings. Shinar will be home for us. If we build a very big city with very tall buildings, then we can stay together. This building will be so tall that its top will be in the clouds. It will scrape the sky. Our city and our skyscraper will keep us together forever. Though they liked living together in a city where everybody knew one another, they liked speaking the same language. They liked being all the same. God saw them building their city so that they could all stay in one place. God listened to them all talking in the same language. And God said, if I don't do something, everybody will be just like everyone else. 
forever. Because God gave them different languages, oops. God had a different idea, a plan for the world to be full of many kinds of people. First, God gave them different languages to speak. And then God sent them out to live throughout the whole earth. Because God gave them different languages to speak and different places to live, they didn't finish building their city. If they had, they could have called it many town because that is where many languages of the world began. Instead, they called that city Balel because that was their word, Babel, because that was their word for dividing one language into many. Just as God created the earth with many different fish, birds, and animals, and just as God created many different things that grow and live on the earth, so God created people. We speak many different languages. We move about in many different ways. We eat different kinds of bread and we eat in many different ways. We live nearly everywhere on earth. We come together to worship in many different places. The people who were building Babel had a little plan to stay together. But God had a bigger plan. God wanted to fill the world with different languages, different people, and different ways of living. And that is what God did. And that's the end of the story that they want us to imagine that story in Genesis in a maybe a different way than we have imagined it before. So I'm going to invite us now, just as this just as the story scattered the people, I'm going to invite us to scatter just a little bit and form little small groups to, to answer some questions together, to talk about some questions together. So I would like to ask you to come together in groups of maybe six or seven. You can stay with people that you came with if you'd like to, and then just add to that number. You can get up and go across the sanctuary if you'd like to, or just turn right where you are. Six or seven people in every group. And when you get to that space where you've got six or seven, one person in the group maybe could be a scribe and there's a little half sheet of paper you'll see sitting out there in different places in the sanctuary. Each group just has one. And then we're just gonna take about um, just to the top of the hour, about five minutes or so to try to talk about these questions together. The questions are gonna be up on the screen. So as soon as you get five, six or seven people, go ahead and start. Questions are up on the screen. And, and, uh, and, uh, and there's the babbling. So see, I am doing something new, says God always in the scriptures. See, I am doing something new. New people, new ideas, new opportunities to grow. The world is always changing. And so may this story and maybe this new understanding of the story awaken us to God's intention for diversity. May we honor difference as a sacred gift. I'd like us to come into a time of prayer. So sort of get comfortable where you are, settle in where you are, time of prayer. 
And uh, what I'll do is I'm going to begin with a prayer from John Calvin. And then I'm going to invite you all, us all, to pray aloud three different things to pray for the world, the nation, and those closest to us. So I'm just going to invite us to where you are, from where you are, just speak aloud. If you have something you'd like to pray for, for the world, our nation, our country, and those closest to us. So let us pray together. Save us, Lord, from being self-centered in our prayers and teach us to remember to pray for others. May we be so caught up in love for those for whom we pray that we may feel their needs as keenly as our own and pray for them with imagination, sensitivity, and knowledge. Lord, hear now our prayers for the world. Lord, hear our prayers as we continue to pray for our nation, for our country.
Lord, hear our prayers for our community and our loved ones. Oh God, may you hold all of our prayers, those that have been spoken and unspoken in your divine heart that even now breaks with ours for all the suffering we cause one another. Amen. Let's continue praying in song. I'm going to invite Francisco back to the piano. We're going to learn a, a new song, because <laughs> why not? And we'll sing it while we're sitting, though. We'll sing it as a prayer. So we'll sing it kind of softly. He'll play it through once. And then we'll just begin singing. And just as we sing it, I, I hope and pray that these words of this song will fill your heart. As you sing the words, that they, you'll be singing them out, but that they will also come in. The song is called God of Great and God of Small. It's hymn number 19. It'll be projected up here. Let's listen to him play it through once.
woman named Gail Pittman. She was a professor. She's now a children's author. She's written a book that dreams of a church for all people. Let's listen as Beth Yeary reads this book for us, A Church for All. So we're going to put some more questions up for us to talk about in the groups where we're sitting. And uh, here they are. Here they are. So let's just spend about maybe five minutes together. Try to give everybody a chance to speak that's in your little group. And uh, let's take a look at these questions uh, after the book we just heard from Beth. Flip your page over. You got a scribe. Flip your page over. Should have on the other side a church for all. I'm going to invite you to just kind of wrap up for just the last few moments here. And hopefully you got to that last question. If you didn't get to that last question, spend just a couple moments on it, jot down some things. And I'm going to ask you to turn in those sheets to me. So um, I'll ask my sweet husband in the back of the room to collect those from you. What's special about the way we are as church? Okay, Henry's gonna collect those sheets. Just, just rip them from the scribe's hands, Henry. Okay. And Henry, when you get all of those pieces of paper, can you give those to the man in the gray fleece, please, for me? All right. Uh, as we, as we come into a time of offering. So as we come into a time of offering, don't you love this? I just love this. I love this fellowship. Uh, <clears throat> let us express our gratitude for this church and for the ministries that are made possible through your generosity. So we're going to do it a little differently today. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're going to sing uh, hymn number 326. We're going to stay seated when we sing the first four verses of this 326. This is a uh, um, song for all the saints. And the ushers are going to come forward and collect the offering while we're singing. So we're going to stay seated and sing the first four verses of 326. And then just before the fifth verse, I'm going to invite you to stand in body and spirit. And I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward with the offering. As we are collecting this offering, this uh, let's be mindful, this is Memorial Day weekend. It's been mentioned already. And this is a song of thanksgiving. This is an offering of thanksgiving and a song of thanksgiving. So let us sing together. Number 326, verses 1 through 5. Right before verse 5, I'll invite us to stand.
we remember with honor sacrifices made and losses endured, acts of courage, grace, and hope, our brothers and sisters who gave the full measure of devotion serving the greatest ideals of our democracy and freedom, and all who continue to do so. We give thanks for the saints of this church who have entered the church triumphant and whose legacy we continue building in faith. We give thanks for all who have gone before us, teaching us, inspiring us, shaping us, and forming us into the people we are today for the life, goodness, faith, integrity, and love that was in each one. We give you thanks and praise. Amen. And now I invite you to join me in the prayer of remembrance. We'll put on the screen and you'll note there's a left, a right, and an all. This is your left and your right. So this is right, this is left. Join me in this prayer of remembrance on this Memorial Day weekend. In life and in death, we belong to you, O oh God, and nothing, nothing, nothing in life or in death can separate us from your love. In the rising of the sun and its going down, in the blowing of the wind and the chill of winter, in the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. In the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. As long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us and in your kingdom, Lord, as we remember them. So we close our worship service this morning with a walk to the Memorial Gardens. I'm going to walk straight out the front. Francisco is going to play some traveling music for us. If you just would follow me out. We have three gardens to visit this morning. The Columbarium is immediately to, well, not immediately, but we're going to take a right and go to the Columbarium. When we're all convened there, I'll lead us in a little, uh, a short uh, blessing there. Then we'll go to the Ricky Casteller Garden. And then the, finally, we'll go to the Gene Henning Garden. Then we'll come back for refreshments.